Hey, what's up? What are you doing? Yeah. All right. Okay. Mechanics. Ready? Okay. I have given you this blue piece of paper. Mine is unfortunately not blue because I'm cheap, um, but that's okay. So this is from No Brain Too Small. I find it's really useful because it's basically just a checklist of all the material we need to cover so that you guys are ready for your mechanics exam. I am focusing on the speed and motion today. We will actually get all of these uh, done in today's uh, question because uh, there are lots of little things. The other thing I want to point out to you mechanics kids is that these equations here will be given to you on the exam. You do not need to memorize them. The thing you do have to keep in mind though is you need to be able to decode what these equations mean and how to rearrange them, okay? Mechanics, in my opinion, is probably the easiest of the exam to get an excellence on. It is mostly just algebra. So if you're good with math, you're gonna be good with this assessment. All right, so first question here is we have a distance time graph. It is really important to make sure you read this y-axis because if that changes from distance to velocity, we read it completely differently, okay? In fact, I think the question I put on the back is an example of a speed time graph. So again, changes our meaning. All right. First thing here is that they want us to describe the motion of the horse and the rider in each uh, section. There is no calculations required. So all they're asking you to do is identify, is it acceleration, deceleration, uh, constant speed, or stationary? Those are four choices. The first one here, when I'm looking at it, I notice that it's uh, not a straight line. It's kind of like a curve. And I see as it's curving, it's curving upwards like that. So what that tells me is that as time is occurring, the distance that I'm traveling is increasing and it's increasing quite rapidly. So what that tells me when I see that little curved line is that this is acceleration. You're right. Okay. Next thing is section B. I notice here that this is a nice linear upward uh, line. So what that tells me is that as time is passing, I am traveling the same distance. So if I'm traveling a consistent distance over time, I am traveling at a constant speed. Constant speed. All right, next one. In C, we notice that we actually have another curve, but this curve is going like sad face. So I'm covering less distance over my time. So this is deceleration. Let me make sure I'm spelling that right, because I am not a good speller. And then the last one, I see that I am staying at the same location. I'm not traveling any distance, so I am stationary. I am not moving. All right. Unfortunately, this is not a high point value question because you are just doing quick recall. So looking at our marking schedule. Oh, and I need to explain this to you guys because you guys missed out because this was, I explained to genetics kids. Okay. Something to keep in mind, mechanics kids, is that we have on this side the evidence. So that gives us an idea of basically the model answer. And we have things breaking down in achieved, merit, and excellence. So things have different point values. Usually at the beginning of questions, they're going to be quite easy. They're going to be worth achieved. And as you go through them, they'll get more difficult or more detailed, and they can go up to excellence. The good news is that even if a question is an excellence level answer, you can still earn the lower points. So depending on the quality of your answer will affect what grade you get. So you'll notice here that there's an achieve point. There's an achieve point. 
Um, I've actually had to cut this up from several different questions. Uh, so this isn't a full question. So with mechanics, um, you kind of have a little bit of a mix and match with some of these questions, and they tie them together. Um, and then there we have one merit point. So what I've given you guys today is a lot of achieve points. Let me just grab a genetics exam marking schedule so you can see what I mean difference-wise. So this is what a full question would look like if you guys were looking at it. Do you see how they have one, two, three, four, five, six bullet points? Yeah? So what that means is that in this question, there are six points for achieved. Then you have merit, one, two, three, four, four possible merit points, and this one here, two excellence points. When it comes to your answers, they will make little notes on how many achieve points you've gotten, how many merit points you've gotten, how many excellence points you've gotten. They will always go top down. So they're gonna look for the excellence level answer, and if it, it's not there, then they're gonna see, did you answer it to the merit level? But if you didn't answer it to the merit level, then they look for the achieve level, okay? What they then do is they add up how many achieve merit and excellence points you have, and then at the bottom determines the point value for your question. Again, they do top-down marking. So they look to see, do you have two excellence points? You don't? All right, well, do you have at least one excellence point? Oh, you do? Then you get an E7. Doesn't matter what the other points that you have. Top-down. Okay? Um, you will have three questions on the exam. Each question is worth a maximum of eight points. So the total amount of the exam is 24 points. 24 is a perfect score. The overall grade for the exam is determined based on how many points you get. So it changes each year because it depends on the difficulty of the exam. Uh, they do balance it out. So if the question's hard to get excellence points, then they might make the excellence overall lower, like 18 points. Most often, the excellence uh, grade is between 19 and 20 is where the cutoff is. Merit is often between 14 and 15. And then achieved can range anywhere from 7 to 9. Cool. So each question adds up to them the total. It is worthwhile to answer everything. Because if you leave a question blank, it's an N0. If you attempt it, you might then be able to get like one or two points and that one or two points could be enough to cross the line. Say for example, the first question you got an A4, the second question you got an A4, so you have eight points and let's say achieved is nine points. If you attempted one of those questions and you were able to get an N1, you would then have nine points and you'd be able to pass. So don't leave anything blank on these exams, okay? It's better to get an N1 or an N2 than an N0, okay? So looking at this question here, this one in our marking schedule was only worth an achieved point because it's a very basic recall. The second question here is asking you to calculate the speed in section B. So basically in section B, if I want to calculate the speed, I want to calculate what the slope is. So what I notice here is I started at 500 and, or sorry, I finished at 500 and I started at 100. So that is my, actually, let me backtrack because you guys are probably wondering what am I doing and why am I doing that? Right, if I want to calculate speed, let's look at my various equations. Speed is also known as velocity. So I want to do the change in distance divided by the change in time. Make sure you are showing all of your work because if you make a mistake, they can then backtrack to see where that mistake is and they will still be able to award you points. If you just write down a number and I can't see where your, your mistake is, it's just not achieved for that question. So first thing I wanna do is look at my change in distance. I started at 500, or sorry, I finished at 500, I started at 100. And then I'm dividing it by my time. So this was measured at 60 seconds. I started my measurement at 30. So we're doing 60 minus 30. And if I did that math, we would have 400 divided by 30. 
So if I did 400 divided by 30, I would get my velocity is equal to about 13.3 meters per second. It's important to write down your units because the units can make a difference between the merit and the excellence. It's a really ridiculous um, decision, but excellence level students don't forget their units. Cool. All right, looking at the barking schedule. So, see what I'm saying for the achieve point? Shows correct process. All right, so for the achieved, shows correct process but uses the wrong point for either D or T and or T. So what that is telling me is that so long as you, where's my red gone? There it is. So long as you grab this equation and you plug in some numbers, even if the numbers were wrong, you can get an achieve point. Okay, that's why I want you to show your work. Show what equation you're grabbing. And then the merit point was if you got this answer correct and this answer correct. Pretty easy, huh? So there was an A point here. There's an A point here. And then if you got both of them, you got a merit point. Just mindful of the time. Yeah, isn't that cool? We got about five minutes. Okay, next one. Okay. I know, so I'm going to finish it. It won't take us long. All right, this next one here we can see is a speed time graph. So it changes how we read things. You see how we have a flat line right here? In a speed time graph that says, it, it says, you are constantly traveling at seven meters per second. So flat line, that means constant speed here. I'm just going to annotate it so that way we have some notes. In this one here, you see how it started at seven and now it's gone down to five. So I have a decrease in my speed. Decrease in speed is deceleration. Just annotating it so that way we know what we're looking at. And also, it then gives you an example when we're comparing and contrasting between the previous um, uh, distance time graph. So even though this is a slope, it means something different. All right. Question A wants you to calculate the distance the, harvest tra uh, the harvest harvester traveled in the first 200 seconds. So this case here, we are then thinking about the area under the graph if I want to figure out distance traveled. So I'm calculating this section here. So I have traveled seven meters per second, and I've done that for 2,000, sorry, 200 seconds. And that would get me my distance. So that, and that cancels out. My distance would be for uh, 1,400 meters. Cool. That one, unfortunately, was only an achieved level. And same with the last one. I'll just quickly do the last one. All right, this one here is talking about a rocket. It's fired vertically. It has a launch pad. It was traveling for two seconds, so that's my time. And it was traveling at 20 meters per second. That is my velocity. They want you to calculate acceleration. So again, look at our resource sheet. Just put them down. Acceleration is change in velocity divided by change in time. So A equals V over T. A equals 20 meters per second divided by 1.2 seconds. So I would do 20 
divided by 1.2, and that would be 16.7 meters per second squared in this case, is the unit for acceleration. This one, unfortunately, was only an achieved. All right? How is it? It's 20 divided by 1.2. Oh, I just rounded it up. Yeah, yeah, they're not gonna, yeah. Gotta know how to round. All right, that's us. Oh, so mechanics kids, uh, either work on that section or that chapter in your side pad. I think most of you guys have gotten it done. Again, I've linked it onto Google Classroom, the collated questions from No Brain Too Small. That is the practice I want you to do so you can see how that same question is asked different ways.